Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Coleman. Just checking in with another video on chapter eight with our fractions getting divided by whole numbers and whole numbers getting divided by fractions. So last week with the work that you did, there were two big ideas that you learned that were very different. When we started the week and we watched the video that I made, we looked at whole numbers getting divided by unit fractions. So that's kind of this setup over here where I've got a whole number and I'm dividing it by the fraction. The other thing that you saw was that a unit fraction could get divided by a whole number. So that's where your fraction is first and it's getting divided by a whole number. So today I wanted to look at these two big ideas and look at how they're different and also how we can take these two ideas and apply them to things that we see around us. So first thing we've got is whole number divided by a unit fraction. So since I'm starting with three, three is my thing that is getting divided. So when I start to draw my model, I'm gonna start with three wholes because that's what I have. Dividing it into a half means I'm dividing it into half sized pieces. So I've got each of these getting cut in half. And if you remember from our video last week, we're trying to see how many pieces did we make. Okay, so then we've got six pieces. The other big idea that we talked about last week was taking our division and changing it to multiplication. So I have my three holes, and with each of those holes, I made one, two pieces. So my division sign turns into a multiplication sign, and the one half is two pieces, because when I cut things into halves, I make two separate pieces. And that is gonna give me six pieces in all. Another big thing that I really, really think is important is to remember if I start with a whole number, my answer is a whole number, okay? So that's going to be another thing that's super important to remember. Here, if I have to write a story problem to go along with this idea, I have to remember the number that comes first, this dividend, is the thing that's getting cut up and divided. So I would say I have, and you know I love food, so I'll say three pizzas. I cut each of them into halves. Now, you have to remember, I'm cutting them in half. I want to find out how many halves did I make. So my question would be, how many one half pieces did I make. So that my question, oops, sorry, I'm off this paper. So my question matches what I'm doing in my problem. Now, flip over to what we did the second half of the week, which is that unit fraction is getting divided by a whole number. Again, the biggest, biggest thing you've got to look at is whatever is first is what is getting divided. So here you'll see in my picture I drew only a half of a pizza, okay? And that one half is getting divided by three. So just like any other number where it gets divided by three, it's getting shared equally by three people or getting split into three equal parts. So I'm gonna take this one half and I'm gonna split it into three equal parts. Now, here you would think those look like thirds, but you've gotta remember this was a whole pizza. So it's actually if you draw it in the other parts, it's cutting it into six, okay? So, because out of this whole pizza, that's not a third, that's actually only one little part of it. So when I change this to multiplication, my one half stays the same because I still only have a half of a pizza, but when three people share it, they get one third of, so that's going back to the last chapter my one third of one half, so part of a part. And numerator times numerator is one, denominator times denominator is six. And you can see in our picture, I made one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, but each of these is one six, okay? So this kind of problem, when I go to describe it as a word problem, I start off with my dividend. What do I have? Well, I have and we'll stick with pizza. One half of a pizza. Okay. 
I share it equally. with three people. How much, and this goes back to our other division work, does each person get? Because I'm not looking for how many pieces in all, I'm looking for how much for each person. Okay, so that's gonna be a little bit different. And here, again, please, please, please notice, I started off with a fraction and I'm ending with a fraction, okay? So I wanna look at a couple problems in the book and I know you don't have the book with you. If you want to do the same problems, you can print them off from the Think Central site or you can just kinda of watch along with me. But in our book, I'm dividing one fourth by three. So here it's starting with the fraction. So here's our whole, but I'm really only worried about this one fourth section because that's all I have, okay? So it says the rectangle represents one pound of beads. Divide it into fourths and then divide each fourth into three equal parts. So I'm gonna take these and cut them into thirds. So now the rectangle has 12 equal parts. When you divide 1 fourth into 3 equal parts, you are finding one of the three parts or one third of 1 fourth. So like I said, this is kind of going back to last chapter, part of a part. So this 1 third of 1 fourth is right here. When I do that, I only want 1 third of this 1 fourth. So it's this part of the part that I'm looking at, which is actually 1 12th. So kind of like I just showed you when we do this, when I change it to multiplication, the 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 4 is 12, and my fraction's getting smaller, okay, because I'm finding part of a part of something. Down here, they did it opposite from me, where they did the fraction first, and now they're doing the whole number first. So it says, Brad has nine pounds of ground turkey and he can make turkey burgers for a picnic. How many one-third burgers could he make? So he's trying to find out how many one-thirds are in nine. So I'm starting with nine holes, so they drew out nine separate holes. They're not all together, they're separated. I'm gonna divide the nine rectangles into thirds. So I'm gonna take each one of these and cut them into thirds which means I'm making three pieces on each one. So each pound just got broken out into three burgers. So finding nine groups of three, that means there are 27 thirds. So when I go to rewrite this as a multiplication sentence, remember my nine, my first number, always stays the same because it's not changing, I'm still gonna have nine pounds. That's not different. What is different is each of the pounds got changed, so I have a group of three burgers I made for each one. That means I'm gonna have 27 in all. So again, start with a fraction, end with a fraction. Start with a whole number, end with a whole number. Okay. So here we go writing more multiplication sentences to solve our problems. Here you're gonna see they did the first one for you. It starts with a whole number, ends with a whole number. And what happened is your fraction changed to a whole number. That's because we're using the reciprocal. So, side lesson. When I have a fraction, The reciprocal means I'm taking that fraction and I'm flipping it. So the denominator becomes the numerator, the numerator becomes the denominator. And I know that the fraction two over one is actually the same as the whole number two, okay? Now, if I wanna take a whole number and find the reciprocal, like here for this next example, when I've got one fifth divided by three, 
I have the whole number three, but in order to flip it, I've got to change it to a fraction. So last chapter we had talked about putting that one underneath. So when I flip three into a fraction, my one becomes the numerator, my three becomes the denominator. Because we're talking in opposites when we talk reciprocals, okay? So here, I'm starting off with one fifth. That's going to stay the same. My three, I'm gonna to change to one third because if three people share something, everybody gets one third. And then my division sign changes to multiplication and I'm gonna get one over 15, okay? So on the next one, if you need to pause this, maybe try these next two on your own and then check and see if you're doing it the same way I'm doing it. Go ahead and pause it now. Or if you wanna keep going with me, let's go. So starting off with the two, again, you have to always remember First number stays the same, keeping it. Second number, you're gonna flip it. So from a fraction to a whole number. So eight over one, when I flip it, is the same as eight. Then I'm gonna change from division to multiplication and I'm gonna get the answer 16. Okay, here, my one third starting off with a fraction. That means I'm gonna change everything to fractions, get a fraction for an answer. My one-third is getting shared by four people. When I have this, it's the same as four over one. The reciprocal is one over four. Because four people sharing something, everybody gets one-fourth. Multiply it, you're gonna get one-twelfth. So hopefully that part helps. In lesson 8.5, which you're gonna be working on tomorrow, they're gonna be asking you to write story problems. And I think this is really helpful in terms of understanding these yourself. So when we go to do these problems, you're always looking at what are you starting with? And that's gonna be what is getting divided in all these problems. You have to think about whatever that first number, that dividend is, that's what's getting divided, okay? So since my first number is four, I've got to think, okay, I've got four somethings getting divided. I always go food, you know this. So I would start off with, I have four, we'll say trays of brownies, because they're delicious. Now, what am I doing to it? I wanna cut it into one thirds. So I cut each tray into one third size pieces. Now, my question is, and it tells you right here, we're gonna find out how many pieces did we make because I took that four holes, and if I did a picture, my four holes are getting cut into thirds, and I'm trying to see, well, what am I doing? Well, when I cut them into thirds, I'm making more pieces. So I wanna find out how many pieces do I have, okay? Now, my answer to that would be 12. Oh, I drew my diagram in the wrong spot. Oops, didn't follow directions. So here's my four holes. I'm cutting them into thirds. And I'm gonna see from my picture that I made 12 pieces. Start with four, end with a whole number also. Down here in this last example, they're doing the opposite. So again, these two big ideas where we flip flop between them, when I start with a fraction, my answer is gonna be a fraction. But if I'm starting with a fraction, that means I'm starting with part of something. So here they gave you some ideas. If I'm starting with a half, maybe I have half of a pizza, half of a yard of rope, half of a gallon of milk. So I will say I have half of a bottle of soda. Now, just like always when I'm dividing by five, you're gonna take that and pour it into five equal cups. You can give it to five friends. Whatever you're doing, you're sharing it between five people equally. 
So I'll say, I poured it equally into five cups. So now I want to know how much is in each cup. Just like before when I used to take a number and divide it by a number. How much is in each cup? So here when I have my diagram, I'll draw my nice soda bottle and give us an easier number for this one. It's halfway full and I'm going to take that half and I'm going to split it into five parts. One, two, three, four, four lines, five parts. So if one fifth of the half went into each cup, that means one tenth went into each cup, okay? So as you're working through these and doing the examples today and doing examples tomorrow, I really, really, really want you to take away that idea of if I start with a fraction, I end with a fraction because it's a fraction of something that's getting shared. If I start with a whole number, I'm going to end with a whole number because I'm making more pieces. That's what happens when I divide by a fraction, okay? And as you're thinking about that pattern and watching for that pattern, really truly take your division sentences and flip them into multiplication. Also, as you're thinking about these, always think this first number is what I have, okay? I have half of a pizza or I have four whole pizzas. Oops, sorry. Or I have four whole pizzas. And that's going to really also help you to guide your thinking of what is happening to my number. Okay, guys? So good luck with your math today and tomorrow, and we'll talk soon.